Hi, and welcome to this latest episode of CIO Leadership Live. I'm David Binning, Associate Editor at CIO Australia. And joining me now is Nick Eshkenazi. I think I've got that right. Who's Chief Digital Officer with Australian International a Gifting Company, Prezi. Nick, welcome to CIO Leadership Live. David, I'm really grateful for you having me and thank you. No, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, of course, Nick, a lot of our uh, audience would know you as the formerly the Group Chief Technology Officer with Australian grocery giant Woolworths. Now, you've spent a large part of your career, haven't you, in um, in the retail space. I know that Woolworths snatched you from a three-year stint, ending your three-year stint with Costco in the US. So you've gone from Costco to Woolworths and now Prezi. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, what what sort of led you to make that move from from Woolworths, where, of course, you had um, not so much a bigger team, because as we're going to get into, I know that your team at Prezi is quite large, if not even larger than the, the team you had at Woolworths, but, but you, know, a, a, you know, a significant senior role within one of Australia's largest companies. How did you sort of make that shift from, from Woolworths to, to Prezi? What was the decision making process there? Yeah, no, thank you, David. Um, it's it's been an incredible journey, and uh, I feel very privileged to have had the opportunity to uh, work for iconic brands like uh, Costco and and Woolworths. Uh, one thing that has uh, driven me through my journey and career at, at the personal level is to be able to make a difference in the lives of other people. Um, I live under uh, the motto in my life which is life is too short to be insignificant. Uh, So if I find myself in situations where I'm not involved in something of significance, then it's time to find something that is significant. Um, And if you had an opportunity to uh, internalize Prezi a little bit, um, we are on a a very powerful and exciting mission, uh, which is to ignite human connections through mm. remarkable gifting moments. Uh, one thing that has happened both as a result of the pandemic, but just as an overall driven by digitization in our lives, is that um, we become less connected with each other. Uh, and to be on a mission to bring that connection back into our lives uh, through remarkable digital gifting moments is quite exciting. And I would love to further unpack this with you because there's some really special uh, components of, of our mission um, that that uh, really drives us on a daily basis as we wake up in the morning and try to make a difference in the lives of other people. Yeah, when you, you, you said something recently that um, at first made me cringe cynically, but then when I kind of pondered it a little bit further, it, it sort of, I became more intrigued by, and it's your idea, your idea of of um, using technologies, particularly AI, which we are going to unpack in this interview, to in, to allow people's computers to give them a hug. Yes, um, uh, one one thing that uh, for for some of us who are uh, vivid readers and I spend uh, quite a bit of my time in books and 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 read. Um, a lot has been created before our times to use. Um, I've become over the years a, a fan of uh, Arthur C. Clarke, uh, a very known um, uh, British uh, science fiction writer, a futurist uh, and innovator. Um, and um, he's invented a number of laws that now have been become kind of the famous Arthur C. Clarke laws. And, and law number three, um, it's quoted quite critically and often, but it's become a driver in my life is that uh, it's it it really goes like this: is that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable for magic, mm. and um, you don't come across a lot of missions and visions of companies in your life who have the intent of through one of their values, which it is with Prezi, to give magic to people. So for me, I found this very incredible connection uh, for probably a first time in my life that we can use technology in a very powerful way, the power of data and digital capabilities combined as they're converging to create magic in the lives of other people. Um, And so maybe for the first time, I'll have an opportunity to, uh, in a very powerful way to 
to fulfill Arthur C. Clarke's law. And, and that's quite exciting for me. So how are you manifesting, fulfilling Arthur C. Clarke's law? What, what, what are the technology underpinnings for everything that we've talked about thus far in particular, for, you know, moving Prezi uh, along on this journey towards computers being able to give people a hug? Yes. Um, look, it's, um, we are after creating magical experiences for people on a daily basis. Uh, and we spend quite a bit of time in our energy to ensure that the experience of the person who creates the gift and the gifter, the way we call it, uh, is, is powerful. So they, they come back to our platform so they can give more, um, to others. Uh, we also, have created a very exciting and powerful recipient experience for the person who receives the gifts. And it's all powered by data and personalization, uh, for which we continue to strive to make it better and improve. Mm -hmm. um, in our, in our uh, mobile app, we strive to put at the fingerprint at the palm of our customer's hand, all of their gifts that they receive uh, on a daily basis from others and be able to use them at the right moments of time. Uh, we're working on some other exciting things that would provide value back to the gifter where the recipient can communicate uh, thank yous for the gifts that they receive, or, or they can um, show how they're using the gift in the most proper way. There's obviously a lot of interesting and strategic things that we're working on that create competitive advantage uh, mm -hmm. for us, but ultimately, we are very intensely focused on listening to our customers uh, so that we can do what is important to them versus what is important to us. And David, what's interesting is that has translated in the customers really voting uh, for uh, the experiences that they receive from us. One example of that is in the month of December, which is normally what we consider our peak period in our year, when there's a lot of gift creation and gift giving and gift receiving, as you can imagine. And it's normally during that time for all retail. But our mobile app was voted at the score of 4.9 out of 5 in the App Store. And it's it's not something that many companies can say for their mobile app. And no. we are very privileged and excited that our customers really value it. And every every feedback that we receive, every single comment, uh, we read it, we try to internalize it, we try to understand it, and we try to see how can we make a difference in the solutions and the products that we offer to our customers. Yeah, well, I mean, no doubt you've been on a fairly steep learning and growth curve since you joined Prezi nine months ago. I mean, I understand that you've grown the team like quite significantly since then. So what was the size of the team when you started with them? What's the size of the team now? Look, we... Um, We've, we've spent quite a bit of time and energy to ensure that we have the right capabilities. I use the term capability to mean skill. But most importantly, we strive to ensure that we create the right culture and the right operating model and the right ways of working for our teams to continue to feel inclusive and from a, from the, where their values are, are really considered uh, so that they continue to grow and evolve in their own personal journey while they're contributing to the value of the organization. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's important to us on an ongoing basis. The team has grown, you're absolutely right. Uh, in, in the past year, just this past year, we've doubled in size across the company. So I realized that we live in, in some really uh, interesting times globally uh, where a lot of companies are taking a step back uh, and they're revisiting their overall expenditures and and how, uh, but we are we're on a growth curve and and we're continuing to find ways to onboard the right talent, uh, not just for today but definitely for the future. But more importantly, David, to your question, we're more interested in attracting uh, the talent that that fits well into our culture and our values and our ways of working. Um, and and that is what we bring uh, to the marketplace from a competitive advantage. Yeah, and so I understand that you're using a lot of the technologies that you're using in order to create, um, you know, better uh, 
the customer experiences you're also using to create more powerful and meaningful staff experiences. Talk me through some of that. Yeah, well, first of all, uh, I, I realized that a lot has happened in the world of technology, especially over the last 10 years with the advent of the cloud uh, and then the, the power of big data across wider cloud ecosystems. We are 100% uh, cloud-based. Uh, we were striving to create all of our solutions to be cloud native on the cloud for the cloud, growing mm -hmm. and evolving in the cloud. And this will continue to be a difference for us. I think it's hard for me to imagine today that you can attract top engineering talent unless you're offering them continuing to evolve cloud capabilities. And so we've partnered very closely with, with cloud providers and, and we continue to grow and evolve in that. Also, uh, we've adopted containerization at scale, so we are fully containerized in, in some parts of our ecosystem and we'll continue to adopt those technology capabilities that bring level of resilience and scale and automation to our staff. And our engineering team has been given the autonomy to continue to look for ways to make their lives easier from an engineering enablement standpoint. Um, it, it, we are not in an environment where we try to mandate all the technology capabilities. But if there is a technology solution that's just emerging right now and our engineering team would find value to adopt it, then we would explore it. And maybe it will be deployed in one of our squads and later will become a part of the wider ecosystem. Uh, but that that is one way in which we create continuous improvement for our skill set. Uh, and, and continue to drive an engineering enablement environment that that provides value for our team so they can come back every single day and continue to learn and evolve and grow. Yeah, that's amazing. And so, you, and something that we've discussed in the past as well, and I, I find this really kind of admirable about you is that you've, you, you, you emphasize that you need to do a lot more than just hire smart people. It's what you do with those smart people once you bring them on board you know ensuring that they're challenged ensuring that they're stimulated you touched on it a little bit there we're talking about you know um you know you've got examples presumably where you've um you've had new staff that that needed and probably have appreciated um their cloud skills being um you know being improved for instance but um it sounds as though you've got a, a fast sort of broader more holistic kind of philosophy with with that as far as that's concerned Yes, thank you, David. I, we, Based on my experience over the years, um, I'll tell you that there is a significant recognition today that um, it is not necessarily about technology and it's not necessarily about all the powerful solutions that you can come that are available today to use, but rather it is more important to create the right cultural environment the proper ways of working uh, for the teams to continue to feel like they're growing and evolving. Mm -hmm. We strive for um, diversity and inclusivity so that the voice of everyone can be heard. For example, um, I've just had it even yesterday, um, um, what we call an ask me everything session that I do with my entire team where everyone can can join. It's not a mandatory, it's not a compulsory session, but uh, any type of question that it's on on anyone's mind is being asked. Uh, it sometimes is not an easy to answer, uh, but it is it is important. And it's it's a it's a clear foundational component for us as a company. Uh, one of our values, David, as you as you've seen, it's uh, we we call it give openness. Um, and it's it's critical for our foundation to be able to strive for everyone to feel open um, and feel safe that, that they can ask anything without any concerns for their well-being or for their own personal career growth and transformation. So um, we, we strive to create an environment of psychological safety. Mm -hmm. for our teams and mm -hmm. and and I think that has been a driver that we can continue to innovate. Another thing, and I know you and I chatted about it earlier, is um, since I've joined Prezi, I've had an opportunity to to uh, start um, um, a continuous focus on innovation through hackathons. So we launched um, uh, right now, we've already had two hackathons. We try to do them on a quarterly basis. 
And many of the exciting ideas that have become a part of our product roadmaps have came out of, of the creative minds uh, and the passion of our team. Mm. Um, as we speak, we're working on some really innovating and exciting things that if it's okay, I'm not going to talk about yet because they would let the products materialize. But I'm really excited about an idea that we had last year that won an award internally. And now that idea was, uh, uh, was included in our product roadmap. It was shared with our board. And there's a lot of excitement because that would generate another revenue stream for us that never existed before. And that idea was born um, out of the creative mind of one of our engineers. And so those are the, this is what I'm here for is, is to create that environment where the ideas and the voices um, can of everyone on our team are valued and they further our journey to um, make our mission come to life. Yeah, it's interesting. And I mean, to, to what extent do you think you're actually, before I get into that, I, I, something else that we should mention is that um, part of your, um, you know, the solutions that you've kind of brought to bear, you and your team have brought to bear um, in um, with respect to improving staff experiences and communications, we touched on this. Um, I understand that there's something akin to a uh, a social credit score, although we mean that in a nice way, not a kind of totalitarian regime kind of way, but something of a social credit score. And I understand that this solution or aspects of this solution had been licensed to Slack. Is that right? Well, we again, we're working on some interesting and creative things. Uh, there, There is a, a solution that we've adopted from the industry today that is incorporated in, in Slack, which we're a user of, that allows um, our team to celebrate each other mm. through uh, what we'll call uh, micro recognitions or micro praises on a daily basis. And, and there are ways uh, that, that are very connected, a part of our mission and journey as you give something that could be a, a, you know a digital currency or or a simple mm. praise point mm. and so we are we are exploring some interesting things that because we do believe that that is a space with an incredible potential but uh, more to come in that space dave um uh not yet all right all right now just finally um I, I'm, I'm making a big assumption here but and the assumption is that you and your team somewhere in the back of your minds have a, a big hairy audacious goal and maybe it's something like to become the amazon of like bespoke gifts or something like that but what, what i'm sort of alluding to is you know you you you're in a, a, a crowded market with some massive giants um do you, I mean, do you find that sort of, did you find that daunting? Do you find that daunting at all in your day to day? And how are you kind of, you know, what's your sort of vision in terms of, you know, bringing on board more innovation, more digital innovation to get towards this big, hairy, audacious goal, which of course I've just put in your, me trying to put words in your mouth anyway. <laughs> No, thank you, David. And 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 look, it, it sounds like you have been listening to some of our strategy conversations uh, inadvertently. And uh, um, interestingly, yeah, yeah. many <laughs> many of the things you're talking about are are very much alive and well as we discuss uh, what the future of Prezi looks like. And it, it is uh, when you think about our mission of igniting those human connections. There is. Um, a desire for us to to be uh, the the platform, the digital gifting platform um, of of the planet, and mm -hmm. and to be able uh, to connect people who are willing to give and want to give um, in a private or a public or a social setting, um, and and those who receive. And uh, there are moments in our lives uh, where us as consumers or us as employees as a part of an organization would like to reward, recognize, celebrate others. And we want to be able to do it instantaneously. 
because as you recognize the difference from the physical world is is the physical recognition the physical reward the physical celebration takes a while mm -hmm. it's it's a little more painful and and we're living in a world that it's becoming a lot more immediate and a lot more instantaneous and and we want to be able to reward each other as a part of a conversation we want to be able to recognize a moment of 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 recognition and and gifting that that we're after and 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 as a result to create those more meaningful human connections by by sharing just a little more magic and that magic of giving and so we're exploring uh things like what what the art of gifting and and what the language of emotion look like mm -hmm. uh in that highly digitized world for us even you and i are mm -hmm. having this interaction through an entirely digital set of tools we're not sitting across from each other in a in a room um, and and those are the moments that will continue to be predominant as a part of our lives uh, and then we do believe that prezi is not just on a growth projection and curve but rather in a in a place where we can really make a difference for some of those magical and special moments yeah um, so that that makes me excited and wakes me up every single day so yeah yeah fascinating co uh, company and um and uh, so a tech leader with a fascinating background nick ashkenazi chief digital officer with prezi thanks so much for joining us on cio leadership live David, thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the, the exciting questions and getting to know Prezi and, and for the audience to, to listen to our conversation today. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure.